Hello, I'm Jeff Carruthers. And I'm Allie Carruthers. And uh, we wanted to tell you a little story about our farm through a series of videos of our experiences with the management of some prairie restorations on our farm. We bought the farm in... 1998. And in 2002, we planted 40 acres of prairie restoration, about 100 different species of flowers and 11 different grasses. And in 2012, we planted another 20 acres or so. And so we have 60 acres of prairie restoration at various stages. And believe me, we've had all sorts of experiences <laughs> with this, things that you should plant, should not plant, right. how to manage uh, property. When we first got the farm, it was all alfalfa. alfalfa. We looked at that and thought, you know, that wasn't gonna work for us. Uh, yeah, it was and a lot of thistle. It, it was, it was a lot of bad things. It was Johnson grass and and some bad things. And so we knew we needed to get rid of those things, but we also thought, you know, we wanted something that was was both environmentally friendly as well as something that we enjoyed looking at. Along with the environmental aspect of it, um, we've had a great deal of help from the Natural Resources Conservation <laughs> Service, the Forestry Department, and we'll uh, discuss that a little bit as well with you during this little series of videos and give you a little hopefully a somewhat comprehensive view of things that work, things that don't work, what to watch out for. This is in the midst of the COVID-19 situation. And originally we were supposed to have the uh, Get Paid to Go Green event on this farm. In May. In May. Mm -hmm. And, and Sari has been working with us, of course, uh, through- From Sustainability Matters. So that's why we're attempting to do this <laughs> through through video. <laughs> this Get Paid to Go Green was talking about cost share funding and what is available for people to help this out. And so we have some experience with that and we'll do what we can as far as filling you in on those details as well. And we hope to just take you through the fields as they start to bloom and various things come up and kind of show you what happens at the various times of the year over the next couple of months. What's the date today, Alan? The 11th of April. The 11th of April, and you can see the red buds in the background, mm -hmm. and things are greening up. Daffodils. <laughs> Daff daffodils. <laughs> And there are the fields in the background, and the fields at this point are having a little undergrowth of green, but um, pretty much they're still brown and rather unattractive. This is a good time to start because we will follow this along over these next couple of months to show how these fields come out and we'll show you the good and the bad, but there are a lot of spectacular views that we'll show you. So here are pictures in June and July, and you'll see there are purple coneflower, yellow coneflower, or also called grayhead coneflower, which is a Retibita panata, and the uh, purple coneflower is Echinacea purpura. Butterfly and milkweed. Butterfly milkweed. We'll go through uh, a lot of these in more specifics. And those photos are to entice you to keep watching, but also right now, even though the fields aren't super exciting, there's a lot of beautiful brown notes. And one of the nice things about now is that the birds are just loving it, that we have lots of bluebird houses. Through the winter, they're basically a giant bird feeder. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of seed on the plants and we'll see hundreds of goldfinches, for example, in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. So even though the fields may not be at their most glorious uh, point, there are many wildlife benefits that can occur at those mm -hmm. times of year. So we'll have more as we go along and hope you stay tuned. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.